Good morning. It's uh, September 11th, 2022. Uh, it is the 21st anniversary of 9-11. And uh, what I'm going to do with this particular segment is give my testimonial and my feelings about uh, what's going on. But first thing, what happened uh, on 9-11, uh, where I was, this commentator was working at a theme park. I'm not sure if I can actually say the name or if I'm legally able to say the name but I will just say I'll describe it as a theme park and there's a section on the on one side where we were all getting ready for Halloween October to come and do this frightening uh, scare fest thingy um, it, it was gonna be called the haunted forest and it was basically just this wooded section that blocks a lot of noise from the the, the streets uh, and the and the uh, and the park, you know, but it's still it's still there. But what we did was uh, made a, a, a pathway from one end zigzagging around and all this other stuff and coming out the other end. Um, and we were making sections uh, of it. One section had a barn with corn stalks and um, the young kids that were playing the actors would come out as these demon scarecrows. Another section was sort of gargoyles, uh, kids dressed up as gargoyles, and we had this uh, this uh, brick laid pathway looking like it's something out of you know England or whatever, you know, and the gargoyles would come out to life and you know woo and all this stuff, you know. There was another section where it was it looked like cannibals lived at. We had it looking sort of like a jungle, cannibalistic area. We had these fake bones that we threw on the scattered on the ground to make it look like you know they were eaten off of. All this kind of stuff, you know, that, that was there. And, you know, but this was in September and we were making it. This is the very beginning stages. And while we were doing that, the uh, the, the the overhead, the head boss pulled up, told us all to gather around. And he, he informed us about how these uh, hijacked planes were being used as bombs on the Twin Towers. One even hit the Pentagon. And we're not sure, nobody's sure yet, but they're thinking one uh, got the White House. And it kind of dumbfounded us. You know, it wasn't just me, it was the rest of my workers as well. But what really sunk in was, how it really sunk in was when my head manager turned back to his truck. He told us to get back to work and be cool and everything, but he turned uh, back to his truck and he sort of looked in our direct stinked. Some country wants to get bombed. And that's really when, it, you know, it's like trying to laugh it off, you know, like, ha, uh, we'll show them. They're in the deep, they're in deep shit now, you know, and all this other stuff. But um, you could tell it was a concern. And we were, you know, that's when it really sank in, that horrible feeling um, of the terrorist attack. And so we went to the local break room to see it. It was in, a, it was in the cafeteria, the employee cafeteria to see it on TV and I said hey I gotta go use the phone to uh, I gotta use the phone so I, I went I, I left the, the cafeteria and went into where our headquarters was the stage prop making warehouse was the section and the other guys followed also and you know so we watched it on 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 our our TV you know we all took turns using the phone calling our moms which is really what the reason why I said I needed to use the phone. I had this real looking at this seriousness of it all. I had a, this sort of dire need to call my mom, you know, um, and and tell her, you know, are you watching the news? She said, yeah. She was talking about it with uh, her sister-in-law, one of my aunts, and and I said, well, don't go over there because she actually lives close to an air force base. And and she says, no, don't worry, I'm not going over there. I said, if anything, get her to come over to where we live. And she says, no, she's fine, she's fine. And I said, yeah, but if, if a, a plane is going to be used to hit an Air Force base, and we've got five here in San Antonio, you know, if a plane is going to be used to hit an Air Force base and it gets shot down, you know, the last thing we want to, to do is see everybody cheer at the fact that the plane missed the Air Force base but landed on our aunt, <laughs> landed on my aunt, you know, and destroyed, you know, where she lives, you know, um, that's, that's not going to be anything to cheer about. 
and she said, you know, look, just stay calm and be calm. She's staying calm. I'm staying calm. You stay calm. So I was like, fine. Um, and I did. I wound up coming, you know, calming down and everything. And we went back to, to work. Um, but it, it threw us off quite a bit. You know, none of us went to work the next day. Excuse me. None of us went to work the next day. In fact, it, it was almost um, it was almost a couple of days later that we went back to work and went back to doing uh, doing our jobs. Uh, it, but it, it was an incredibly incredibly big challenge of of showing you know of our of our spirits you know and uh, the fundraising to help all the victims and uh, you know everybody got you know felt a whole lot more patriotic let's stand together and all this good stuff uh we were put to the test and we we won you know we won against them the ones that tried to break our morale um the repercussions of it obviously was the uh two and a half hour wait for a plane ride um the benefits, however, was the simple fact that, I mean, nowadays it's no big deal. We we get there, everybody gets there about an hour till takeoff, which technically that's that you know before that you usually it was always best to get there an hour ahead of time. Some people would only get there twenty minutes till, you know, or ten minutes and all this stuff. And there was there was always that pe the people running trying to make that flight hold the gate hold the gate and all this other crap like they're so damn important you know but it was always a good better thing to get there an hour ahead of time get everything processed your baggage checked um your paperwork done your passports checked and all this good stuff and then you can enjoy a meal or watch some tv you know on those pay tvs i don't know if they still have them the last time i was in an airport last time i had a flight was uh the 1999-2000 New Year, I went to uh, Vegas with my grandmother. I took my grandmother. She had a great time. She had never been. She was 70 years old. Never been to Vegas, you know. So 1999-2000 New Year, um, you know, was the last time I was in an airport at a, at, on a flight uh, that I ever flew a plane. Uh, and, and the reasons why I haven't gone back is not because I was traumatized or whatever, saddened by the loss of my grandma. It's just... It, Time went on and so did I. Time moved on and so did I. I've been in a plane, you know. Okay, you know. I've ridden it a couple of times. Good for me. And, you know, to constantly stay and, and make it a, like, what, a tradition? You know? No, time moved on and so did I. Um, But I heard the repercussions, yeah. The repercussions of, of having to go there two and a half hours ahead of time, you know, uh, for security's sake. Also, another repercussion of that, no more visiting to take a date to the uh, the restaurant that was there. It was never really an ultimate romantic getaway thingy, but occasionally I would take a date to the airport restaurant where we'd watch, you know, the, the planes take off and, and land, you know, at night where the, you know, where you saw their lights and stuff out there on the runway, you know. Occasionally, I did that. It was it was a nice little different way of doing it. You're paying tourist prices, but it doesn't matter. You're paying tourist prices if you're eating downtown, you know. Uh, I really miss doing that. I really miss doing it, even though I have I'm, I'm still single. But I I haven't had a date in a while. But that's beside the point. Uh, I miss the option as well, because everything's so secured and, and closed off, you know. I always told myself if I won one of those Mega Million or, or uh, Powerballs uh, lottery tickets, if I ever won one of those, I would actually open up a restaurant and, you know, hire the best cooks and all this good stuff. And I'd open up a, a, a one for families and, you know, and one high end, one uh, high class, you know, high end uh, $30 a plate kind of thing, uh, you know. But it, what, I'd open about two or three of them uh, for different demographics, financial demographics, and I'd have them by the airport just simply because that, not because it's the best thing ever, but because it's another added memory, you know, 
it's another nice memory to eat like that with the with the aircraft taking off and all this stuff. It's kind of like those that enjoyed the harbor uh, back in the shipping days and, and the days that you could actually sit on a dock, you know, maybe throw a fishing line into the water, you know, see if you can fish something out. You know, it, it, in an oddball sort of way, it's, it, you know, it's kind of like that that kind of a scenario. Um, but yeah, before 9-11, I used to actually do that from time to time when I was younger in my in my late teens, early 20s. Uh, I don't know if any of them are, are ever going to watch this program, but if they can remember, we used to actually sit at the, the food court and uh, watch the planes take off and land. We did it at least once, you know, every other group of friends throughout the course of time. I, I, I did it at least one with a couple of friends or, or at least, you know, a buddy, you know, and, 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 and it was for no reason other than to enjoy the tranquility, kind of like sitting in front of a fish tank, but only watching airplanes <laughs> take off and land, you know, while, you know, having your, having your pop and your, and your burger and, you know. Or a hot dog, you know, and a bag of chips, you know, just watching, you know, just watching the planes, just chilling out, you know, uh, the repercussions. Now it's a minor repercussion, but yeah, that is a repercussion nowadays. You can't have that anymore. If you got to see them, you got to see them from a distance. Maybe if you're lucky, you can find a nice spot on FAA grounds. Uh, but more than likely you have to do it outside of the, uh, outside of the airport, you know, um, and you're not really watching the full takeoff and land experience. I mean, again, unless you're in an area, a certain area, you know, where you could see the runway. Uh, but it's not like the old days. It's not like where you could sit down and watch the, you know, watch them from the food court. Or watch it from the dinner table with, uh, with your date. You know, with your girlfriend. You know? Uh, and I'm not bringing up names just simply because time has moved on and so have I. So is she. Okay? Uh, that girl is, is, is long gone. She's got a family now and doing this stuff and that stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't know where she is. I don't know. I don't know where she is. And I seriously doubt she can even remember me per se, you know, cause once that, once that woman has devoted her life to that one man and her family, everybody else just whew, leaves them, leaves the memory, you know? So I ain't mentioning any names, but she knows, you know who you are. And, uh, I still remember. And, um, I'm, I'm happy to say that, uh, even though we are not together, we, you and I did have, uh, um, a nice little memory, you know, it's still up here in my mind. And, uh, I hope it's still in everybody else's mind who used to do that. Also, I wasn't the only person there, you know, my, me and my girlfriend's uh, whichever one there was about there was about four throughout throughout uh, uh, two decades uh, from my 20s to to uh, my well 30s yeah from my 20s to into my 30s uh, there was about four girlfriends um, but yeah I, I, um, you know I wasn't the only one there was a lot of people there you know doing that same thing and I thought that was cool uh, it, it'd be nice if we could actually have something like that come back again just for the memory. You know, it's the equivalent of eating, um, you know, of eating in like here in San Antonio, eating in the Tower of America's. It's that it's that tower with the rotating uh, restaurant. You know, everybody's done that at least once as well. At least, you know, I've done it with a couple of girlfriends. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it's minor repercussions, but it's it's a it is a repercussion nevertheless, um, because of the terrorists that started this crap, you know, and uh, the the benefits. Now I'm gonna move to the benefits. We got um, a whole lot better security throughout the course of time. There were a couple of mishaps and stuff, but as far as terroristic attacks go, you know. It's been about 21 years since anybody got a plane and used it as a bomb. Okay? And I'm not, I'm not jinxing us or anything. I am stating this fact. 
you know, and it starts with the training of, of these pilots at the schools, you know, and I bring that up because one of the things that the hijackers did was they, they went to school and they asked how to operate the plane. They didn't want to know how to land it. They didn't care about that kind of stuff or whatever. And it mind boggled the teacher, you know, but he was stuck with, well, they're paid customers, you know, I don't know why they're only, I think, he, you know, if memory serves, he got to thinking that he, they just wanted to know how the plane works. And that was the sole reason for aviation, uh, the aviation schooling, you know, it was almost as if they're implying, I'm never going to fly the plane. I just want to know what it's like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and it makes sense, but now it's a red flag warning. And since then, uh, uh, any kind of terroristic opportunity has been stopped, you know, uh, it's been prevented and it's because of little telltale signs that before this, any possibility of a threat, you know, was just considered, oh, well, you know, he, he's shortchanging himself you know, the full uh, school experience, but he's a paying customer, so, oh, well, you know, that kind of mentality is what kept us asleep. Not anymore. Not anymore. We're all very aware, you know, even down to a little Uber driver like myself is very aware. We see somebody that says, I just want to know how to fly a plane, and that's it, you know, I don't care about how to safely handle a gun. You know, that's a warning sign. <laughs> All I want to know is what's the sharpest axe ever made? What? You know, even somebody like me is going to be like, oh, hell no. I'm not going to say, oh, well, I guess he just wants to know what metal, sharp metals are. No, hell no. I'm calling the fucking cops, man. <laughs> Sorry, I'm calling the police. I'm calling the authorities. You know, so the upside or not so much the, 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 the upside, but the flip side, which leads to more optimism and, and more uh, um, uh, awareness is, is the fact that we are more aware, you know, and it trickles down from that type of prevention and safety uh, tactics, safety measures you know, he said he just wanted to know what the sharpest axe was available, you know, uh, or, or the sharp, how, you know, he, he said he just wished he knew what it was like to, to spill blood with using a machete, you know, that kind of stuff. It better safe than sorry. Let's call the cops better safe than sorry. You know, it's taking that preventive tactics which leads to preventing measures which leads to preventing an actual terroristic attack you know and sure we slacked on some parts of another there was a guy that dressed up like a woman to climb a roof to shoot down on a parade he left a manifest behind you know and everybody ignored it uh so yeah we have slacked but for the most part you know since 9-11 we've actually the, the America, it's America alone has done a lot to prevent terroristic attacks. Now we're actually aware of any kind of manifests and all this stuff, um, dec and declarations made by people that want to do shootings and, and some kind of terroristic attack, as well. You know, these things are always eye openers. They're always refreshers. They're, they're, they're refreshers to law enforcement. There should be refreshers to us in society as well. Without everybody saying, oh my God, the world has gone to hell and all this other stuff. No, we've just gone more aware. Especially as the killings have gone. One of the things that I've said in, out, of, out of the past couple of uh, posts was, it's been a long time since a lone gunman stood in front of a crowd, sized up people, and started shooting, pulling a shotgun out from underneath his coat, you know, which was a huge clue now, what to expect, 
It's been a long time since a guy walked out in a 90 degree weather afternoon with a raincoat in the middle of summer, you know. Nowadays, we know that's a guy with a shotgun under his coat, you know, and that he's going to start shooting in a public area. It's been a long time since somebody wanted to know how to operate a certain type of vehicle or aerial uh, aerial plane, an, an aerial vehicle, you know, just for the sake of knowing how to operate it. It's been a long time since we had somebody that wanted to do that. And if they had, those were addressed as the warning signs, okay? This is what we've, as a society, have become more well. So it's not so much the country's gone to hell. It's that we have become a whole lot more aware of what's going on. And uh, it's that, in turn, is a good thing. You know, especially in quite contrast when making sure that something so bad as 9-11 doesn't happen again. Now, I'm not telling y'all anything that that you don't already know. Okay. Again, this is just my testimony. And all of this stuff that I just said, stuff that I'm looking at, and take, taking a step back and looking at it from a third person point of view. You know, you can agree to it. You cannot agree to it. You can argue, you know, argue with, but argue with somebody else because I'm not in the mood to argue. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, take it as it comes. But yeah, give your, give your share of what happened. Give your testimony of what happened. Uh, let all of us observe, watch, or read if you're going to do a written testimony. You know, let us all read it. Let us all, you know, let our minds grow as well. Let our, let us see what you uh, experienced in, you know, through your eyes. And um, we can't forget because we just can't forget. We never forgot um, December 7th, 1941. We shouldn't forget September 11th, 2001. You know, we should always remember these terrorist attacks and remember all of the pay take take time to uh to commemorate the preventive measures that we've taken since then and 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 always remember why we did that because of these incidences you know and uh take the time to to commemorate how far we've come remember it always remember it that's my testimony that's why I'm always going to remember it and I hope everybody out there enjoys uh enjoys yourselves and all this stuff, but always take that one time to remember what's going on. And I say take the time to enjoy yourself. I'm not saying let's celebrate. You know, that I think what President Trump said, happy 9-11 day, was just disgusting. You know, uh, I think everybody that 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 restaurant over in uh, one of the southeastern states, Alabama or Georgia, I can't remember which state. But there's a restaurant that changed its menu in commemoration for 9-11, which uh, was very disgusting because it wasn't commemorative at all. It ridiculed the event, you know, uh, in reference to crashing planes uh, or, or crashing planes serving and naming it after a spicy dish, you know, Um something something concerning stacks of ice cream or something like that two scoops of ice cream or whatever you know and then pouring you know red syrup on it strawberry syrup on it and calling it one of the towers you know i mean it's just disgusting i mean i don't know if they actually said that uh i can't remember i can't remember if they actually said that but in my eyes they might as well have you know they might as well have they might as well have called it bloody tower or burning tower you know It's, um, it was sick. It's nasty. And it's obvious people, um, these are coming from people that think 9-11 was a hoax. People that think that, um, you know, that, that nobody really died. And, um, it comes from people that just really don't care anymore about this kind of stuff, you know. Um... 
and in turn it's it's finding you know the death of those innocent people entertain as entertainment and that's that's just wrong we, we all know this um so never but i am saying enjoy yourself on 911 you know especially as long as we are remembering what happened there tonight is a football game i'm going to watch it you know but i'm also going to be uh doing that vow of silence even though i'm going to be in front of a television screen i'm also going to be doing that vow of silence for you know you know along with the players and all of them you know no differently than as if I was there, you know? And it's only right. It's only right. We're not celebrating 9-11. We're commemorating the victims and heroes of it. Huge difference. Huge difference. That's why we don't say, Happy 9-11 Day, you know? That's why you don't... You. That's why we frown at... Excuse me. Sorry, I burped. That's why we frown at... Uh, restaurants you know let's say it's 911 specials coming down for the 911 specials you know that's disgusting that is disgusting i think people like that should have their businesses shut down to be totally honest i think a president should be thrown in jail and and face legal fees for saying something like that the president of the united states you know because he's the president of the united states you know, thrown in jail for a day, a million dollar fine for saying happy 9-11. F that guy, man. F that guy. So, um, that's the long and the short of it. 9-11, 21 years later. This was my testimony. Hopefully you guys get to put out there your testimony and, um, I wouldn't mind, you know, seeing, reading, or hearing about it. Uh, I also have a podcast, Chris's Comments, off of anchor.fm forward slash Chris dash comments. I'll be giving this testimony on an audio only uh, podcast. Um, and I hope, uh, so I hope, this is the reason why I'm saying I hope to at least hear your stuff or read it. If not, watch it uh, on YouTube, you know. I hope everybody out there uh, takes care of themselves. Remember this day. Uh, re re review everything that you know about terroristic tactics and and uh, preemptive terroristic attacks. Um, the tactics leading up to it as well. Uh, refresh your memories and all this good stuff. You might be the one being the good Samaritan preventing some kind of uh, um, attack, you know. Or even it just its attempt, which would be obviously way better. But um, nevertheless, um, you know, let's all keep doing that. Uh, this is uh, Chris with Chris's Comments signing out.